Hey, what's going, everybody? Stories of Elon. We're on installment number four. Kids creating massive amounts of drama, family life in 2020. Let's get into it. Elon Musk, right? And on the side, I'm just going to have some video playing. All right, so let's get it. Musk's personal life was transformed in May 2020 by the birth of his son, who became known as X. And the first of the three children, Grimes X, had an outward sweet sensitiveness and calm about him and must who craved his presence he took x everywhere and he would sit on his father's lap through long meetings rides on his shoulders and around the tesla and spacex factories wander precautiously through the solar roof installation sites turn twitter's lounge areas into a playground and chatter away in the playground during late night conferences calls and he and his father would repeatedly watch rocket launch videos together. And he learned to count down from 10 to 1 before he could count up. And there was also must like quality to their interactions. And they were closely bonded, yet also paradoxically slightly detached, cherished each other's presence, but respecting each other's space. Must, like his own parents, was not overprotective or hovering. X was never clingy or dependent, and there was a lot of interaction, but not a lot of coddling. That's good, Elon. Keep it up, man, because people be coddling people too much. Must and Grimes, who conceived their child through IVF, had planned to have a girl, but things kind of changed, et cetera, et cetera, and it turned out to be a male. They had already settled on what sort of name it would be, Exa, as an extra flops, a supercomputer term and ability to conduct operations per second and et cetera, et cetera. So they kind of explain the meaning behind the name. And the name is basically the extra flops in love and artificial intelligence. All right. The A12, which had been spelled A-X-I-I -I on a birth certificate because California did not allow permits to have numerical in their name, whatever. Right. The third name is always a battle because Musk wants to delete them because he thinks it's too busy. I go into like five names, but three's a compromise. So three names was a compromise. He couldn't get more. It is what it is. And when X was born, Musk took pictures of Grimes having a C-section and sent it around to friends and family, including the father and brothers. Grimes got understand. No, not understand. She got horrified and scrambled and asked him to delete it. It was Musk Asperger coming out in full effect, she says. And he was just clueless about why I'd be upset. She's oversensitive, guys. All right. <laughs> you having kids and then your C section. It basically you having a kid. That's what he was trying to send out to people. Stop crying. All right. Now let's move into the next point. The teenagers. Oh, here we go, man. All right. A week later, must order kids came over to see their father and ex. And an S, and I don't want to put the kid's name. So S, his autistic son, was especially excited because of the love for babies. Must had begun collecting. The simple, wise observation that S made and even sharing him with or sharing them with Justine. That's one of his ex-wives. And S has a really interesting perspective, she says, because you could see him wrestling with abstract concepts like time and the meaning of life. And he thinks in very literal terms that split you into a different way of perceiving the universe. See, people be going overboard with their kids, swearing that they're like, my kid just created the cure for cancer. I'm telling you. <laughs> and he's there just freaking licking glue. Like, come on, man. And an S was a triplet conceived through IVS, uh, two siblings in a set were identical siblings. And at first they were alike that Justine says even she had a hard time telling them apart. So two kids really looked alike a lot and she had a hard time figuring out who was who. Um, but by but they became an interesting study in the role of genetics, environment, and chance. Quote, they lived in the same house, in the same room, and had the same experiences and did similarly on tests, Musk says. But D thought of himself as smart, and K didn't for some odd reason. So bizarre. Guys, even if people are in the same household, they won't turn out to be the same. Everything's not the same. And everything is not perceived the same by both of the kids. And their personalities were very different. D was an introvert. Um, Ate little and announced that age eight, he was a vegan. All right. So the kid said he's a vegan. He, he's off of the, the pig. He's not a five percenter. He's off the hog at age five. And he's a vegan. And when I asked Justine why he made the decision, she passed the phone to D to answer. So the 
hits it to decrease my carbon footprint. Like, bro, explain yourself. <laughs> and he explained he became a classical music prodigy, composing dark art and practicing on the piano hours at a time. Must would show videos he took on his phone of D playing. D is the name of the kid. I don't want to put his name. And he also was a wizard in math and physics. I think D is brighter than you, May Must once said to her son, who nodded in agreement. Cat. He's smarter than you. I swear, man. I, I, he, finna, he finna figure out what a black hole is. And then he grows up to be licking barbecue sauce and Subway and smoking weed. Like, <laughs> Now, this is the reality about people's kids, all right? K, taller and strikingly good looking, like me, you feel me, became more of an extrovert who loved to solve practical problems in a hands-on way. He's bigger and more athletic than D and is very protective of him, Jay says, Justine. He is the child most interested in the technical aspect of what his father is doing and was the one most likely to accompany his father at the rocket launches. And that delighted his father, who says that his greatest moments of sadness are when his kids say they don't want to hang out with him. I think a lot of parents are like that. Nothing special about Elon, right? A lot of parents be sad. When your kids grow up, they don't want to hang out with you no more. They switch sides on you, all right? And their older brother, Griffin, shared their ethical outlook and sweetness. And he also understood his father well. At an event at a Tesla factory in Texas, one evening, he was hanging out with some of his friends when his father asked if he would come with him backstage to the holding room. Griffin hesitated and said he would be he wanted to be with his friends, then looked at them, shrugged, and went off to be with his father. Yeah, be with your father. Forget your friends. Your friends are sellouts anyways. They're going to get married and never talk to you again. All right, brilliant in science and math. He had a gentleness that his father lacked. Okay, whatever. And was the most sociable member of the family, at least until X came along. He, okay, so he was gentle. Then X came along and that changed. Come on, man. Shut up, man. He was gentle. I'm like, guys, stop letting these. Yo, if you're a young man, don't listen to these normies, all right? They want you to be gentle and sensitive. You need a man with sensitivity. A man like, don't you want a man that would give you money? Stop listening to these people, man. They're going to condition you to be a sucker. And then there was Griffin, Griffin's non-identical twin, uh, named partly after Musk's favorite character in the Marvel movies, X-Men series, X. And we're going to call the kid X. And X was strong-willed and developed a deep, deep hatred for capitalism and wealth. And there were long and bitter exchanges in person and by text in which X repeatedly said, I hate you and everything you stand for. It was one factor that made Musk decide to sell his house and live in, live less lavishly. Uh, but that had little effect on the relationship. By 2020, the rift had become irreparable. X did not join the other siblings in visiting their new stepbrother. He didn't even want to see his stepbrother. And he's a good guy. Come on, guys. I hate you. You got money. Send that kid to Africa. Send that kid to Africa or third world country because I really want to see what they say there. Like, right? Send them to a third world country, please. Want to be talking bad about capitalism. Let's continue, man. Kami. Kami at an early age. Kami kids. Kami children. And so X and Elon were already estranged when a 16-year-old decided to transition to a female around the time that X was born. Hey, I'm transgender, and my name is Jenna now. And then she texts everybody but Elon. Don't tell my dad. She also texts Grimes, asking her to keep it a secret as well. Eventually, Musk found out I'm from a member of his security detail. See, that's the stuff right there, man. She's doing that out of spite, to be passive-aggressive, et cetera, right? Don't tell my dad. You're going to tell everybody around him, but not him. Or just tell everybody around him and don't talk to him, and that's it. But again, remember, she hates him. He doesn't hate her. She hates him for who he is. He accepts her for who she is. That's a big difference. All right, but I say, parents, stop letting these kids hold y'all hostage. 
They like to hold you hostage with their manipulation of their love. I'm going to withdraw my love. And then they know that's going to hurt you as a parent because one of the things that parents fight for so much and one of their greatest joy is their children. Parents, go find joy outside of your children. If they want to rot, if they want to smoke weed, and if they want to hate capitalism and think that the world is more lofty and it's better under the hands of communists and fascists, then let them do what they do. Disown these suckers. That was a part of what we did in a human species. Now y'all too soft and sensitive. You can't disown anything. All right, let's continue, man. Musk would end up wrestling often publicly with transgender issues. And this is all cap and lies, okay? So I'm not even going to go into that because they try to throw dirt on the big homie's name as if he got a problem. And then Christina insists that Elon is not prejudiced against gay or trans people. The rift with Jenna, she says, was caused more by her radical Marxism than her gender identity. Of course, they're trying to leverage that and say, oh, see, you don't like her because you transgender. And it's like, bro, she had beef with me because I had dough. I had monies and she was mad. Right. But she lives off of money. Right. She eat and she got a house. I'm pretty sure she don't live in the ghetto. Man, stop the cap. And she was at times estranged from her own billionaire father. And before marrying Kimball, and she was married to a black female rock star. And when I was still with my ex, Elon tried to convince us to have children, she says. And he has no basis about gay or trans or race. Exactly. He's just chilling. He's just Elon, man. Jeez Louise. Here we go. His disagreement with Jenna, Musk says, became intense when she went beyond socialism to being a full communist and thinking that anyone rich is evil. So here she goes. She's being she's stereotyping and she's discriminating a person due to the amount of wealth they have for their class. See, who's the real hater? Hmm? Who's the real bigot? I think she is. And he partly blames what he calls the progressive woke indoctrination that pervaded the Los Angeles private school she attended Crossroads. And when his kids were younger, he sent them to the school that had created or that had it created for family and friends called AS. And then they were there until they were about 14. But then I thought they should be introduced to the real world for high school. So he kind of took them out of that and put them in the real world in high school. OK, but let's move on. Uh, the rift between Jenna, he says, pained him more than anything in his life since his infant death of his firstborn child, Nevada. I've had made many overtures, he says, but she doesn't want to spend time with me. Elon, walk away. Forget about it. Yalla. It happens. Kids are like that. Kids are, all go you know, whatever. You got a bunch of other kids that love you. You can't do nothing about it. Maybe she'll change her mind eventually. Maybe she never will. But it's her path to work, uh, her path to walk. And if she wants to feel like that, let her. Let it roll off your back, man. You can't do nothing about that. You can only do what you want to do. You can only control you. You can't control your kids. Y'all parents out here worried about your kids so much and they're not liking you. That's why your kids got you underneath their thumb. They telling you what to do as a parent. Hey, parents, shut up. You like, yes. All right. You don't know how to raise me. Yeah, I don't. All right. You're a failure. I made mistakes. All right. Shut up. Okay. Now you're going to get me chocolate donuts, fruit roll-ups, and cold cuts. Yeah. And you're going to buy me my car one. Okay. You're going to buy me the iPhone 28. Okay. And you're going to shut up and let me do what I want. Okay. Now, if you want to be a good parent and you want my love as a kid, then you're going to listen to me. Yes, I will. That's your parents failing. Because y'all maybe are trying to play a game. Oh, man. Well, if the kids love me, they ain't going to go with my ex-husband. Oh, well, if the kids love me, they ain't going to go with the, my ex-wife. And then the kids just manipulating the goddamn dog shit out of you guys. <laughs> I'll be like, go, bye, exile. Mm -hmm. So exile them, Elon, if they're not grateful. Let them, let them, let them go to Africa. Let them go to Syria. Talk about that dumb stuff they be talking about now. Let them go there. Let's go to their homes. And Jenna's anger made Musk sensitive to the backlash against billionaires. He believed that there was nothing wrong with becoming wealthy by building successful companies and keeping the money invested in them. Now, remember, he's keeping the money invested in the companies that he built. And he built successful companies which create jobs and bring factories back to America. But 
I guess Jenna knows something that we don't. But by 2020, he had come to feel that it was unproductive and unseemingly to cash in those riches and lavish them on personal consumption. Until then, he had lived rather luxurious. His primary residence was in Bel Air, Los Angeles, which he had bought for $17 million, and it basically had a bunch of bedrooms and bathrooms. I don't want to go down what it was. He bought some stuff, all right? He living, he living a good life, all right? God damn it. Let him live his good life. He created a good company. In early 2020, Musk decided to unload them all. I'm selling almost all physical possessions, he tweeted, three days after X was born. We'll own no house. He explained to Joe Rogan the sentiment that led to his decision. Quote, I think possessions kind of weigh you down. And they're an attack vector, he said. In recent years, billionaires have come over to come in bad terms with the people. And like, that's a bad thing. It's a prerogative. It's a bad word. And they'll say, hey, billionaire, you got all that stuff. Well, now I don't have stuff. So what are you going to do? And they're still going to hate Elon. These normies are normies, right? You get rid of your stuff, they're still going to hate. They don't congratulate. They don't change. You could create a company and cure cancer. They'll still hate, especially if you made any money from it. You're supposed to be broke. You're supposed to be broke and cure cancer and give me all your money. And so once he <laughs> finished selling his California home, Musk moved to Texas and Grind followed in a small track in Boca China. He rented from SpaceX as his primary residence. Um, he would stay at other people's property. Um, he lived on a property in Colorado River, River in Austin, Texas, where billionaires lived so his kids could come there. I stopped staying at Ken's house after the journal doxed me. Um, people kept trying to come around and someone managed to get through the gates and into the house. But good thing Elon Musk wasn't there. Guys, carry that blicky. People out here are crazy. All right. And so Musk backed away. He attempted to buy a house, but some rich guy tried to overcharge him. And net net, that's what you deal with when you deal with kids. He's Louise. Guys, Elon's a human too. He deals with problems just like you. Ooh, those are some problems, man. But the rest of his kids, they were good. The rest of his kids, you know, he spends a lot of time with them. He takes them in a lot of places. And I think that's very interesting and that's exciting to see. It's exciting to see Elon out with his kids, right? It's exciting to see him out with his babies and having fun and his kids learning about a lot of stuff. I think that's all cool. I think that's interesting. His family seems okay, well put together, though the book is a straight violation of his father, but we're not even going to get into that until some other installment or video I'll talk about it. But Elon, keep moving. Hey, guys, what you want to learn from here is if you got kids and they treating you like that, disown them. That's what I'm saying. Allegedly, we don't know if these are true. This is just in the book about that uh, particular kid, but we don't know if it's true. So at the end of the day, if kids are playing you like that, don't let these kids play you. Don't don't let these kids hold their love hostage and then try to control you and manipulate you from that. Like, come on, man. Nah, that's not how it goes. Because when I was growing up, I remember saying, yes, sir, and no, ma'am. I remember never parting my lips to say something negative to my parents and definitely not my uncle, my uncle James and Aunt Renee. Oh, heck no. You definitely are not saying nothing disrespectful. It was yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. It wasn't until I got around some white folks that I saw that kids was yelling and talking back. I was like, oh, snaps, what's this? <laughs> what y'all on? They was like, they in my personal space. My friend, yeah, my friend Crow, uh, you know, you better not get out of my room, mama. My door was locked. I got privacy. I'm like, damn, y'all got the Constitution up in here? I ain't got no privacy. I ain't got no rights. <laughs> I'm a slave over at my crib. But they was talking all types of smack. I was like, yo, this is wild, my guy. So that was something I got introduced by other, other households. But mine, it was, yes, sir. No, ma'am. I'll do what I'm told. And that was it. Yeah, we was told. We was told what to do. So, hey, Elon, stop letting these kids tell you what to do. Shout outs to everybody else. Thanks for watching this installment, Stories of Elon. And I give you a little bit of stories about myself, but that no, it's good all around. I'll see you guys on the next one. I greatly appreciate it. And everyone loves to hate Tesla. And I guess the Elon too. And one of his kids, allegedly. I'll see you on the next one. Shout outs to Elon. Stay strong.